It's 4.39 in the morning. I have an exam tomorrow, so we're gonna be studying. It's a pretty big exam. The topics are physiology and neuro. So we're going through all the systems in the body and obviously I just need a revise for it. So, made myself coffee. Um, I'm still trying to wake up. Yeah, I usually like to wake up really early and then get in a good block of like two to three hours of studying, um, just consistent studying. And after that, I'll take a break and then study some more and then take some more breaks. Yeah, let's go upstairs and study. <laughs> so good. Um, whenever I'm going through like lectures, I never watch them at one time speed. So like, this is one time speed by the way. There's two major regulatory systems. The other one is the nervous system. Yeah, see that just bores me to death. It's too slow. So usually I watch all the lectures either two times speed or three times speed. So this is two times speed. But generally involved in activities that require longer duration and slower speed. Now, please. So we look at the anatomical arrangement of a white. You may sound crazy, but I understand all of that. Yeah, he's just going through lecture slides and talking about the endocrine system. Let's see if we can listen to it through time speed. Yeah, so for this lecture, um, not quite. He talks a bit too fast. The other ones that talk really slow, three times usually works, but. I think two times speed. Um, Okay guys, um, it's a solid like two hours of study. I reckon what I'm gonna do now is honestly take a shower um, and then like just stretching. Okay, it's, it's like almost seven. So um, yeah, I think it's a good time to take a shower. Take a look into the mirror, follow in your heart, but to silence to the fear and you deserve it. You deserve it. All right guys, um, just took a shower before I go back to study. I think I'm gonna make sure that I have the right nutrition. So I'm gonna go downstairs, make another coffee, have some breakfast. Pick up the phone, little darling, I got a bit to say. I'm speaking from the heart, I pray it doesn't ricochet. I know you got his up, distance makes it hard enough. I hope that I can ask for you to listen, man, this part is tough. I sent a message and maybe you didn't get it yet. When you have a second, you should check it, swear you won't regret it. I'm stepping out of a meeting, a big amount's where it's leading. I'll make you proud in proceedings, we'll hit the town in the evening, darling. And then it's time for us to say- Alright guys, um, all done. It's 8.35 now, so it's 8.35 a.m. And yeah, mom and dad are already awake, which is low-key concerning, but you know, Asian parents, whatever. Um, but yeah, I had breakfast with them, so that was really good. Um, had my vitamins, coffee, uh, I will make in a little while. I'm just a little bit full and I don't need the caffeine at the moment. A lot of you guys probably are wondering like what techniques that I use to study. Um, I said it in my Q&A. But I definitely use like active recall, which I think is very important, especially for like exams. But for consolidating my knowledge, I use the Feynman technique. Both techniques are like really, really useful. Active recall is just really good. And the ways that I implement it is when I'm writing down my notes, I usually write questions underneath my notes, um, questions that refer to like my notes, if that makes sense. And then I will always try to 
stop and summarize after each kind of page that I write in terms of notes so that it consolidates my knowledge. So yeah, that's one way. Uh, I also do like practice questions. That's part of Active Recall um, and use flashcards as well, which I think is like super useful. Um, now in terms of the famine technique, I think that's really good for identifying the gaps in your knowledge. Uh, I think there's a really good quote by Albert Einstein. It said, um, if you can't explain it simply, then you don't understand it well enough. It's a really good quote. So whenever I have like a new concept that I, I, I want to learn or something that I, I need to prepare for and know for, for my exam, let's say it's the nervous system. I will go to my sister and I'll start talking to her about the nervous system and I'll be like, hey, okay, just sit down. I'm going to start explaining everything about the nervous system. So there's the central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, blah, 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 blah. So I go and explain it to her and I try to explain it so that she understands because obviously she hasn't done any of the lectures, any of the content. So if she's able to understand what I'm saying and when I ask her questions, she's able to say the answers. That means that the way that I've explained it is, is in a very simple way. Also, if you're able to explain complex concepts in simple language, in a way that people who don't have preconceived knowledge about the topic can understand what you're saying, it just shows a very good and deep level of understanding. Also, when you're explaining the concepts or trying to explain how it works, and this can be used for anything, not just like in med, it also identifies the gaps in your knowledge. So let's say you're talking about the central nervous system and how the pathway it crosses at the medulla. And let's say you forgot that part and then you're explaining it to her. Okay, so it goes, it follows this pathway and then it crosses at the, the, um, the, the boom. And then you just identified the gap in your knowledge. So then when you go back, you can use active recall to consolidate on your knowledge and make sure that you understand the pathway. That's just one example. Yeah, those are the two techniques that I use and I think they're really, really, really useful. Also, I just had to double check my knowledge just in case I'm saying the wrong thing. Um, but yeah, the dorsal column system, um, that's where in the second order it desiccates in the medulla to the thalamus. So yeah, I am retaining information. <laughs> but yeah, okay. I couldn't fall asleep again Been overthinking all the little things I've said I'm sleep deprived almost every day Oh So I've studied like quite a bit But like It's been good though um, But one of the things that is so important When you're studying for a long period of time Is taking breaks So that's what I'm going to do right now Um I planned to play basketball with my friend Dakota. Um, I'm going to win. Hands out, I'm going to win. But um, yeah, I think it's really important to take breaks in between your study. Just give your brain those periods where it doesn't really have to think about the cardiovascular system or the nervous system or the gastro system. And obviously, removing yourself from the environment that you study in and I guess have a lot of stress in, I think it's a really good way of, once again, not only allowing you to relax, but also allowing your brain to think about nothing. And I think that's, for me, where my brain actually stores the information when it's not thinking about anything. Um, which is why sleep is so important. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna remove myself from my study environment and put myself into my competitive environment where I can just kind of relax. So yeah, let's do that. And when I come back home, back on the grind. Back on the grind. Right. Time to show Dakota who's daddy. Let's go. My, my ankles are feeling fine. Yours are gonna be broken though. About to play, he's gonna lose. Alright,
All right, so first game was 11-8, your way. Can't believe I lost. But, we've got two more. Um, yeah, he's gonna lose. We're gonna lose. I told you I was gonna break those ankles. Didn't believe me. Come out here, good comeback. You know, last week, what did I lose? 2-11 or something? <laughs> yeah, 2 If I don't win the next two games, I'm gonna fail my exams. Game two. That is uh, game two, and then game three for the cider. So you, you beat me 11 6, 11 8. 11 8. And then I beat you 11 5. 11 5. And then I came back 9 2, 3, 11 9. Oh my god. I don't even speak about it. Alright, that's the game. Feels good. A very good. Need a break from studying. So, nah, it's good. I am back. Yeah, gotta get back to studying. Um, a little bit more to do before I can call it a night and um, go to sleep. Do you guys hear that? It's raining. And I think like the ambient sound, I'm not even sure that's the right word, but just the, the sound of like raining, wind and thunderstorms. It's the best sound to not only fall asleep to, but like to study too. So yeah, anyways, um, back at it. Times uh, 10:52 p.m. All right, guys. Um, I think it's time to call it a day. So yeah, it was a pretty, pretty long day of studying, uh, but I did get a good break in between. Um, yeah, I woke up at around 4:30, and now I'm gonna knock off um, just to make sure that I do get my seven hours of sleep before the exam tomorrow. Yeah, overall feeling pretty good. Yeah, so this was just an insight into what my day looks like when I'm studying. Yeah, I hope you guys like that. I do have a lot of new content coming out. I have a Melbourne and Sydney vlog coming out, which is going to be very, very exciting. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, wish me luck for my exam tomorrow. Good luck to everyone who's got exams or studying for something. 
you guys are going to smash it. I will talk to you guys in the next one. And don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, bye. Some days know what I want. Some days it's hard to decide. But the journey gave me reason to rhyme. Fall eight times. Please believe that there's nine times. I rise because the spirit is strong. Even if the way I said it, where I did it was...